Welcome back to the Home Lab and I've got a really interesting little build for you today that I'd like to share with you. What we're going to look at is this really massive seven segment display I've just built. So this is a bit different for FJ's physics. What I thought I'd do is share a little bit of electronics with you. I've recently got back into my electronics after um, quite a gap of building things, maybe really 30 years uh, between uh, the build I've done recently and some of the builds I did many, many years ago. And um, I've kind of got a bit obsessed recently with seven segment displays. Um, I think most of you will know what these are. Um, they're a little bit retro um, and you can see them a lot on older apparatus like some of the apparatus I've got on my bench and even my uh, bedroom clock uses a seven segment display. I like them because they're really really bright if they're LED ones so I can see the clock at night and um, they're sort of really easy to wire up and use. So that gave me an idea. What I thought I'd do is try and build a really massive seven segment display. Um, it's probably not the biggest one in the world, but it's certainly um, a pretty big one. And I want to share with you what electronics I had to build to make it work. And also uh, the mechanical work that had to be done to build the structure of the display. So let's kick off with the displays themselves. Uh, they're normally very small little things uh, that you can buy about this sort of size, but you can get larger ones. Um, these used to be um, on sort of gaming machines, pinball machines and things like that. And uh, what you need to know about these displays is, hints in the name, they've got seven separate segments that can be lit up. And if you light up groups of these segments, you can show uh, the shapes of numbers or letters on the front. Uh, for example, if you want to do the number one, you have to light up this segment and that one. So you get this um, vertical line. Um, there's also an eighth place, a decimal point, and sometimes there's a ninth, another decimal point here. But um, what we're going to look at today is the seven segments. The other thing you need to know is um, obviously what order you're going to light them up in to get the letters or the numbers you want. And uh, they always go in a sequence. So the top uh, sector segment is called A. This is B, C, D, E, F, and then the middle bar is G. So if you want to make the number one, you need B and C lit up. And there are contacts on the back that do that for you. So you can't just plug into one wire and get the number you want. You need to know which segments to light up. So what I had to do was build something that would be the structure, the mechanical structure of my massive seven segment display. And I also needed to create some electronics that would clock through a series of numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero and then it would feed it to the right LEDs on here to make the number that we wanted on the screen at any given time. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the finished item and then what I'll do is I'll show you what electronics was needed to make it work and also how I cut out uh, this foam to make the actual shape of the display. So, um, I've got two different colours of foam here and we'll look at that in a minute. And then on the back, I've got LEDs uh, going into the segments, probably not very clear on the camera, so I'll show you some close-ups of this. And down here, I've got the circuit board that I built um, that has the chips that are needed to count and then to feed the right number to the seven segment display. And then because I'm using a lot of LEDs, I need quite a bit of current or a bit more current. So I've got a Darlington driver that will then increase the current and light the LEDs in the display. So it's a sort of um, three stage process. We've got a timer that goes tick, 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 a counter that goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and then a driver chip that creates a little bit more current to drive these big banks of LEDs on the back of the display. So let's now look at the mechanical side of the construction. And to do that, I bought some of this ether foam Stratocell stuff. It's some um, sort of packaging foam 
Um, I think it was about £10 for a block, uh, about twice this size, so I cut it in half. And um, they sent the wrong colour. And I sort of thought, oh gosh, what am I going to do? And then I suddenly thought, actually, it makes sense. I was just going to really do a white one and sort of separate this and have the uh, red LEDs showing out behind. But because they sent the black, I thought, well, why don't I actually cut out the shape from the black and push the white into the gaps that I've made? I haven't done a brilliant job of it, but it's just a bit of fun. So, in fact, by getting the uh, black foam by accident first and then having to buy um, some white, um, it's worked really, really well. And uh, this stuff's really easy to cut with a really sharp knife. You don't need to use a hot wire or anything. Um, the only difficult thing was you need a template to do it. So I had to make myself a big paper template of the shape that I wanted, put it on top and then cut out the shape that I needed. And actually it's worked um, quite well. So, as I said, I was getting back into electronics after rather a long break. And to build up my confidence, I thought I'd do the circuit on a breadboard. It's always a good idea to do your initial circuit on a breadboard and try it out. Um, that's that whiteboard where you can plug components in and pull them out. And I made lots of mistakes. Uh, some components were working properly because they were out of old boxes that I had. Um, but you can make all your mistakes on a breadboard and try each little bit of the circuit as you go along and get the final thing ready to build before you put solder to a board. So I did that first, got it all working and then moved over to the Vero board where I could build the circuit a bit more permanently with a soldering iron. OK, so let's now have a quick look at the circuit that I built and how it works. And if you're not into electronics, don't be too worried because I think it'd be good to watch this and just get a feel for how electronics does what it does, even if you can't follow all the wires and things. But it's a fairly simple circuit, so I hope it'll give you confidence to have a go at building things like this. So here's a quick picture of the breadboard I built with the 555 timer on it. I know there's lots of wires, but it's a very simple device. It just needs a few resistors and a capacitor or two, and it needs some power. And what the 555 timer does is it sends out uh, positive voltage pulses that go click, 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 and they can be used to drive other circuits. So I got the right values of capacitors and resistors. You can calculate them, but I just sort of messed around a bit until I got it basically ticking about once a second. So that then feeds into a 4026 chip. And the beauty of that decade counter chip is that when you feed pulses into it, every time it gets a pulse from the 555 timer, it counts up one. So it goes one, two, three, four, etc. And the clever thing is the output pins of the 4026 are configured so you can wire them straight to the seven segment display and it knows which LEDs on the display, which segments A, B, C, D, E, F, G, to light up depending on whether it's had one pulse or two or the third or the fourth coming in. So that's what drives your seven segment display. I then needed to add another chip just to get a little bit more current for the big seven segment display. And that's a Darlington driver, which basically just uh, does exactly what's coming out of the 4026, but it just creates a little bit more current so you can drive more LEDs at once. So once I got my circuit working on the breadboard, the next stage was to transfer it all to a Vero board. And I buy these Vero boards um, for projects that have little strips on them. And I find them really useful for circuits that have integrated circuits because you can push them into the board, solder them on in little sockets, and you've got a little short sort of bits of tracking coming out that you can connect to. Uh, my other word of advice is always get one of these cheap uh, stands. Um, I only seen these recently. I used to use like five hands, you know, I'd sort of wedge a book and uh, wedge something else and have a crocodile clip to try and hold the circuits that I was working on. Why I hadn't seen these, um, what's that falling onto the floor, a screw or something? Um, why I hadn't seen these before, I just don't know, but they're absolutely brilliant. So let's get soldering. So you can see I've got my uh, Vero board holder here, circuit board holder, absolutely brilliant. And uh, you'll notice that I start soldering on components 
and when I do that of course the uh, breadboard circuits are getting smaller and smaller as I transfer them across to the Vero board and um, it's a one-sided board so um, I can solder on the back of the board and if the tracks are too long I can just cut them or I can extend them with wires and my son Barry always likes to get involved in this sort of thing so he came to have a look and was really keen to call out the numbers when it was all working. So once I'd cut out the foam and made my seven segment display mechanical bits um, it was then time to wire it up. So a whole load of really bright LEDs and what I did you can see on the bottom of this picture is I cut a slit into the lower segment and then pushed the LEDs into that um, I didn't need to glue them, they just stayed there. And then wired all the pluses together and all the minuses together. So I can now light just that one segment. And uh, slowly but surely, more and more LEDs went in and uh, there were wires everywhere. So um, I find these um, clips really useful to use. So they're sort of clothes pegs just to hold the wires where I want them. And then I put some con block on. Um, so each segment has its own connection and then finally what I could do is bring some wires down uh, to the main board and get it all wired up and working. So let's finally have a quick look on the back of how I've put all of this together. So here's my power supply, a rechargeable PP3 9 volt battery. That comes into the board that we built. There's the 555 timer. I've got a little pot here that can change the speed that the timer clocks at and this LED is here just to show me that it's clocking correctly. It's quite nice to have things like that on circuits. Um, here's a reset button so we can press that and it starts again from scratch. Uh, then we've got our decade counter that uh, feeds into, I think it's this lower one here, uh, so I can see it's counting. Then we're into the Darlington driver out of the Darlington driver uh, that feeds this rather brighter blue display and out along the ribbon cable and up here and into each of the individual segments and you can see I've labeled them uh, remember we're looking at the back now so A, B, C, D, E, F, G so it sort of reads the other way um, so you can see how I've wired it all up and the beauty of this foam is you can sort of screw directly into it with um, sort of long self-tapping screws and everything just stays where it should be. Oh, final thing on this one, I, I just missed this, is what's going on here. Um, backup LEDs, okay, they're not wired up at all, I just poked some in um, so I've got some spares. So I do hope you enjoyed that video of building the massive seven segment display and you perhaps learnt a little bit more about electronics. Um, I do remember people on YouTube always saying, oh, what should you have in your perfect uh, electronics workshop, etc. What you should have, the most important thing to have in your electronics workshop, and this will surprise you, is a project. OK, if you want to build something and you're really keen on it, even if you don't quite know how to make it work, you're going to work it out as you go along. Have a project that you want to do and then you can acquire the tools and bits and pieces that you need for that specific project. I think that's a really good way to do things and I've learned a lot by doing that. Um, I've sat in workshops where there are all the tools and all the equipment and it's like, well, what do I want to make? <laughs> OK, so have something in your mind that you really want to make anyway. I do hope you enjoyed that video. Um, I can make some more electronics little project videos if you like. Um, I've got quite a few cool little projects that I'm working on that I'd like to share with you if you're interested. Um, do click on like and subscribe if you want to, but you don't have to. But most importantly, come and join me again sometime. I'll be making another video very soon.